Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Hall Summer Channel. Good to be with you. Uh, last live stream. I'm trying to remember what we talked about last live stream. It seems like it's been forever for whatever reason. So it's still week to week, but uh, we talked about flight, fun flood <laughs> flight fundamentals. Let me try that three times. Flight fundamentals uh, we discussed last week. So if you recall, we covered jazz, uh, four forces of flight being lift, weight, thrust, drag. Talked about angle of attack. We talked about straight and level flight and how to go from a, uh, how to do a climb, descent, uh, how to go, uh, how to uh, adjust your, airspeed from one from uh, let's say you're flying straight and level and you're flying 90 knots and you want to go 100 knots how do you do that how do you slow down uh from a certain speed to a slower airspeed um so say you're flying at 90 knots but you want to go uh, fly at 60 knots or 70 knots then we talked about how to change from straight and level to climbs at the straight and level uh, we covered all that last time in Flight Fundamentals. Um, this particular stream will not be as long. We're going to focus tonight on turns. That's our next topic. So I want to dive right in, uh, first of all, by talking about how turns work in the first place. So as always, I'm going to begin by showing a particular uh graphic to you and this one that will come on screen is here shortly here it is is where we will start first of all uh, if you look at the left side of the graphic where it talks about straight and level flight you'll notice that when you are in straight and level flight that total lift counteracts uh, weight and they are balanced so that you are not climbing or descending. And obviously, you're not uh, turning as well. However, when you are rolling the aircraft into a turn, you'll notice that there are two components of lift that occur. First of all, there's the vertical component of lift that goes straight up. That counteracts the weight that uh, drops down. And then you have a part of the lift, total lift, that is the horizontal component of lift that angles, as you see where it says total lift, that angles as you uh, turn the aircraft. So what happens here is when that occurs, the lift is not going to be as great as the weight that's pulling downward on the aircraft. And so you're going to see a situation where the nose is going to want to drop. And I want to illustrate that right now. I want to just show you how that happens. And I am going to take the graphic off in order to do that so we have more screen where we can see so you'll notice when I am right now I'm just over oops gonna add airspeed here or add uh, power try to get back where I was You'll notice, I'm going to change the view so we can see the nose now. So you notice we're basically flying uh, straight level, climbing just a bit, so I'm going to back the power up just a touch. Uh, but you'll see right now that for the most part, lift is counteracting weight. We are flying level. You'll see that with the vertical speed indicator we're right at zero so we're neither climbing nor descending um, you'll see that the heading indicator it's not we're not turning 
Uh, you'll see that at the altimeter, we're not climbing or descending at the moment. Well, we're climbing just a touch now. But for the most part, lift equals weight here. Now watch what happens. Uh, I'm going to back the power up just a touch because we're climbing just a bit. So I want to back that power off just a just a touch. Anyway, you'll notice again we're we're not climbing, we're not descending. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just do a turn. And when I do that, watch what happens at the at the, here at the altimeter and also vertical speed indicator. So I'm just I'm not I'm not going to pull back on the yoke or anything. I'm just going to show you what happens. I'm just going to do like a 20 degree turn. And when I do that, notice that the nose starts to drop. You see that it's it's dropping. In fact, we're descending right now on a roughly 20 degree turn, uh, and the plane will rock. So don't let that don't let that fool you. It'll kind of rock sometimes, depending on what the wind is doing. But bottom line is, you will start to descend. So you'll see that it is trying to now drop looks like here about 200 feet a minute something like that and you'll notice the altimeter as you look at that and again I'm rocking a little bit there might be some wind going on here so but basically if I increase that turn you'll really start to see it because as I increase um, you'll have even less lift and you'll see that it's it's definitely descending now, especially as I increase the uh, angle of bank for this aircraft. So, so what do you do in a case like that? How do you counteract the tendency for the nose to drop and the plane to descend, especially if you want to stay level? Well, all you do in a turn to do that is you pull back on the yoke just enough so that you maintain, you'll be looking at, you'll glance here, okay, but you want to keep your, you want to keep your eyes outside as you're turning because you want to see how the nose of the aircraft relates to the, uh, you'll get what's called a sight picture, okay, how the nose of the aircraft relates to the horizon. So it's, it's a good idea to, and you'll occasionally glance down here to see if you're doing okay, but basically want to have your eyes out here especially with VFR or visual flight rule rules flight um, keep your eyes outside and you get that sight picture uh, in your turn now if I turn the opposite way again I want to make sure I pull back on the yoke but notice the sight picture when you go right is going to be different than when you're making a left turn so You'll want to get a sight picture here because the nose of your aircraft will look slightly different to the horizon. So you see there's a, a distance here, here, where if I make the left turn, let's see what it looks like on the left side. Let me go back this way. You'll see that the nose is way up here. It's above the horizon. So you see there's a difference in the sight picture. And you will get a feel for how to look at the horizon as you're doing turns. And so one of the points I want to make is get that sight picture with the nose of your aircraft as you're doing turns. Now, you know, it'll look different when you're doing a 20 degree turn versus a, you know, steep turn. So you will have to get a feel for that sight picture and that will come with practice and time as you do turns in the aircraft. So I'm gonna level this out right now and basically escape for just a second. So I wanna talk about, there's another thing that happens in a turn that is called adverse yaw. And I wanna pull up another uh, image to discuss this a bit because this is something you'll see that happens uh, in a turn, especially if you don't know how to do what's called a coordinated turn, which we'll talk about 
here in just a few minutes. But what I want to do right now is, as I'm showing you this image, the thing I want to point out here is pretend like this plane is doing a left turn. Okay, so it's banking to the left. And so what's happening, the lift of this wing here on the inside of the turn is less than the lift on the outside because of the way the ailerons are deflected. Okay, so this aileron is down, and this aileron is up, and we're doing a uh, we're doing a left turn. But the thing I want to focus on here is the drag. So you see at the top of the wing that the drag is greater on the wing that is outside the turn where the aileron is down. You have greater drag here. And on the side of the wing that's on the inside of the turn, you have less drag. So you see that the arrow for drag there is smaller than the arrow for the uh, wing that is on the outside of the turn, or the right side of the, the wing in this case, as we face the turn, I should say, if we're facing the plane, it'll be the left side. But anyway... The drag is greater there. Therefore, what happens, you'll see an arrow called adverse yaw. It tilts the plane momentarily to the left. And that's because you're not applying enough rudder when you start the turn. So we're going to talk about slipping and skidding here and, and the fact that you have to apply proper rudder when you start start a turn otherwise you'll have an uncoordinated turn and you will either slip or skid the airplane in this case what happens with adverse yaw it's going to tilt the plane because on a left turn it's going to tilt the plane momentarily to the left because of the drag uh it's going to yaw it to the left just a bit and then it and then it finally goes into the turn now i had trouble to be honest, I had trouble getting this to happen in this flight simulator. I don't, I don't know if it's my uh, joystick, which is what I use, but I have not been able to do it easily. So I'm going to have to fake it to show you what it looks like, and I'm going to fake it by applying some right rudder. But even if you did apply right rudder, if you just kept the rudder centered and you turned without proper rudder coordination, you would see adverse yaw and you might look at some uh youtube videos on adverse yaw to see what that looks like but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and take off this image so bear with me while i do that and so it will look I'm going to go back straight and level again. So we're going due west here on the heading indicator. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to fake it. I'm going to have to sort of pretend like we're having it first, y'all, because, I, again, I haven't been able to do it real well. Uh, and I'm going to go into the turn. What it, it would look like something like this. It would temporarily go that way and then go into the turn. You see that little rocking motion? And, again, I had to fake it with the... Um, with the joystick, but I'll do it one more time going left again. So it would temporarily go this way. I, I actually overdid it there with the rudder, but that's probably a little too much, but you get the idea. Momentarily yaws, there's that inverse yaw to the opposite direction of the turn, essentially. So obviously if you're making a right turn, it would yaw the other way. It would yaw this way and then go oh, out. That was horrible. It would yaw this way and then go into the turn like that. So you would see sort of this yaw motion and then before you go into the turn. And that's adverse yaw. And that's why you have to apply uh, proper uh, rudder correction in order for the turn to stay coordinated so you're not having that adverse yaw effect and you're not slipping or skidding the aircraft. So um, what I'm going to do just temporarily to show you the slip and skid. So we have a couple of uh, images for that.
I'll start with the slipping. Slipping turn here. The computer doesn't want to cooperate tonight. Sorry. There we go. I think I've got it now. So this is a slipping turn. And again, because of adverse yaw, it's probably easier to do a slipping turn than it is a skidding turn. So a slipping turn occurs when you're not applying enough rudder. Uh, in this case, you're not, it's because this is a left turn, you're not applying enough uh, left rudder to stay coordinated. You should, your nose should be right on that blue line of the turn, and the back of your plane would be on that, uh, you know, your rudder. You're, you're basically the fuselage of your plane from nose to tail should be following that blue line. You'll notice the plane is skewed from that. It's tilted to the right. And on a, at a slipping turn, the nose is outside the turn. So you see it says not enough rudder causes the slip. And you'll notice if you look at the lower right, you'll see the, there's that ball that is used to indicate whether you're in a coordinated turn or not on the uh, turn coordinator. And so you see that instrument on the lower right. You see the ball, it's on the left. So if a turn is coordinated, the ball should be between the two black lines. It should be centered pretty much to indicate that you are doing a correct turn. But a slipping turn, the ball will be off to the left. So let me see if I can, again, I'm going to have to fake it a little bit maybe, but I will try to do a slipping turn. So I'm going to, so you'll notice right now the ball is centered. And what I'm going to do, see the ball centered right there. So when I start to make the turn, if I do a slipping turn, you'll notice, whoops, the ball goes to the left. See that? And I'm not adding enough rudder. Uh, in this case, to the left, I've got too much, either too much right rudder, which I'm having to fake, because as soon as I let it go, it wants to go to the center. Uh, but you basically, basically what I'm doing here is purposely slipping the turn, and you see the ball is on the left side. So to correct that, they say, step on the ball. What does that mean? So that means, since the ball is to the left, you want to apply more left rudder. So if I go, what that means is, if I go down, since the pedals control the rudder, I want to step on the ball by applying left rudder. See that? Left rudder in. You don't want to do too much, but you want to do just enough. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Probably going to crash because I'm not looking outside. So you want to do, see how the, see how the ball is centered right here? Right now in the turn? That is a coordinated turn. So in this case, I'm not slipping. I've got a coordinated turn going on, and, and I'm keeping the the turn coordinated here. So it looks, it's a nice smooth turn, and I'm staying on the line, as it were, of the turn, that blue line, the imaginary blue line. So that, so look at that ball. If it's to the left, you want to step on the ball with the left pedal, which will apply left rudder. Now the opposite of the opposite problem of that is oh you know what I had to had the image the whole time so let me take the image off I always forget to do that I'm going to do this one more time because you did not see the ball so I apologize but and you're like well that would be great Scott if you could show us what the ball is doing. so I am going to uh, show you again so wait for that to go away all right so we were talking about this ball right here is in the center that's a coordinated turn okay so if I am basically slipping the aircraft see how the ball goes on the inside there so what that means is my no my nose is pointed the nose of the airplane get this up 
is pointed to the outside of the turn and you'll see that the ball indicates that because the ball has shifted here to the left. If I was doing a right turn, it would be opposite. If I was slipping in a right turn, the ball would be over here. But we're doing a left turn and the ball's here. I am, my nose is pointed outside the turn and therefore I am slipping in the turn. I'm not coordinated. I need to, basically what I was trying to say is I need to add left rudder by stepping on the ball, the left, so the ball's on the left side. Step on the ball by applying left, by pressing on the pedal here, which will apply left rudder, which will then, and again, it's hard to fly when I'm looking down here, but that will center the ball. Now, the opposite side of that, or the opposite is the skid or a skidding turn. So I'm going to go to this uh, graphic. The skidding turn is the opposite in that, like, and again, we're showing a left turn here, in that you are applying too much rudder. So in this case, you're applying too much left rudder on the left turn and you cause a skid which forces the ball as seen on the instrument to go to the right side you'll notice the nose of the airplane and the skidding turn is on the inside of the turn and instead of on the blue line which would be a represents the coordinated turn so let's demonstrate that now just to show you what that looks like So once again, we're in the turn. Right now we're coordinated, right? All's good, but if I apply too much rudder, notice the ball, this is a little harder to do, but the ball, let me see if I can hold it here. Here we go. The ball wants to go on the outside. So I got a lot of left rudder here. And you'll see that the We've got way too much left rudder here, and the ball is staying to the outside, so I'm not coordinated. That means the nose is inside the turn. And so, and then again, if you think of stepping on the ball or pushing in the right pedal, in this case, because the ball's to the right, you apply some right rudder, and what will happen, that ball will start to center, and you will be into a, <laughs> you'll be into a coordinated turn. Actually, I'm straight and level right now, so we'll go to a turn. And there you have it. Right there. So it's really getting a feel for, when you're doing a coordinated turn, it's getting a feel for how much rudder to apply. So when you're doing a left turn, you want to apply left rudder and try to keep the ball centered. And when you're doing a right turn, so if you go to the other direction, you want to make sure you apply enough right rudder to keep the ball centered like that. So you see that I've got it centered. I'm climbing a little bit, but you see I've got the ball centered, so I'm staying coordinated in that turn. And then the other thing we talked about is you want to make sure you have that sight picture. So you want to, for the most part, keep your eyes on the outside and get a sight picture. So if I'm on a 20 degree turn, what does that sight picture look like when I'm doing a right turn? With the, oh, crap, did I forget to take the, I'm sorry guys. Oh, I'm doing great on the images tonight. I really apologize. That's horrible. Oh, uh, all right. So let me demo once again, I've got the image off. Let me demo once again the uh, skidding turn. So this is, I'm going to do it left again because that's that's the uh, way we were doing it before. So that is where you have too much right rudder. Sorry, I'm going all over the place. Too much right rudder. See how the ball is, this is a skidding. So left turn, the ball is now over to the right. And 
Therefore, the nose is up too far on the inside of the turn. You add a little right, right, I'm sorry, you step on the right rudder. I'm sorry, did I say right? I meant to say you have, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm all over the map today. You have too much left rudder in this case. Too much left rudder. And so the ball is on the outside to the right. So that means you're pressing too much on the left pedal. Therefore, you need to step on the ball, which is to the right, by adding a little pressing on the right pedal so that you correct it so that it starts to center in the turn there. And then you have more of a coordinated turn. Again, the whole point of this is to work on keeping the ball in the center just like so, right here. So again, uh, let's just do a right right turn. So on the right turn, if I have too much right runner, notice the ball goes to the left side. So again, I am doing a skidding. I'm doing a skid here because I got the nose on the inside of the turn. The ball's on the outside where if I had too much left runner, I'm doing the slip, slipping turn. So the ball goes to the opposite direction there. Again, the point is, step on the ball. So in this case, I need a little more right rudder to get the ball to the center. And I've got a coordinated turn. And you'll get a feel for this when you, when you practice. And it takes practice to work on your coordinated turns. Uh, hopefully the realism is good on your flight simulator because if it's not uh, it might be difficult <laughs> you know uh, uh, and make sure you turn off your coordinated settings because sometimes depending on your flight simulator uh, you can check a, uh, a setting to make it easier to do turns but what it does is it sort of automatically handles the rudder for you but that is in a way cheating because you want to keep you want to make it realistic and practice how to do proper coordinated turns by, you know, focusing on keeping that ball in the center in your turn. So I apologize for keeping that image in the way. I did that twice. Oh, I was, told myself I wasn't going to do that. And I did it anyway. So it's so easy to forget to take that off. Um, so we talked about the slipping turn, the skidding turn, showed you some images there, The court, what the coordinated turn is. Uh, another thing I want to point out about turns is, before we do a, a few of them, and I know we've been doing some already, but is that when you come, when you start a turn, whether it's to the right or to the left, if you look out at the horizon, the horizon should look like it's turning around a clock initially. So if we look at the mouse pointer, for example, and I start to turn, notice it looks like the world is rotating around a clock before the turn starts. And then if you come out of the turn, the same thing. So it looks the world should look like it's just sort of spinning around the clock. So see that spinning around the clock, just like that. So, so when you're doing a turn, momentarily the earth should look like it's just spinning around from a central point and i'm going to come out of this turn earth is spinning around let me go to another see how it looks like the earth is just standing still there for a second as we do the turn and then we're turning we're going around and then we want to come out of the turn the earth should again see how the earth looks like it's still you want to work on that as well so you don't want to be sloppy in your turns and you know <laughs> you know you want to be jerking or you know jerking the uh, aircraft around like this and yawing and you want to try to be smooth in the turn by having that sort of appearance where it looks like the plane is as you start that turn is spinning around a certain point on the earth so there we go we turn and the earth looks like it's standing still and then 
to go into the turn on this side. So again, that and you can do stuff like this to try to practice that. Just left and right. Try to keep the earth in the center. Back and forth. Get comfortable with it, right? And then you go into your turn. So try just doing stuff like this. Back and forth. Back and forth. And you'll get comfortable with that concept when you start your turns or when you come out of a turn. So you can try that as well. Let me go a little bit to the let me go a little bit to the uh, so we can start at the west. So another point I want to give you is when you do your turns, it would be nice to assume that there's no other traffic out there. Uh, if you were to do this in the real world. You want to always be alert for traffic, right? When you're doing maneuvers, you always want to look around. In our case, I turned off the traffic on the simulator, so <laughs> there's not going to be any traffic, at least there shouldn't be. Uh, but in the real world, when you when you are practicing turns, or you're going to do a turn, it might be a good idea to raise the wing in the direction of the turn so that you make sure there's no traffic there. So you're looking around, you're keeping, you're staying alert to traffic. One of the things you want to do is, for example, if I want to do a left turn, I'm going to want to look over here, raise the wing a bit, and then start the turn. And you raise the wing so you can see if there's any traffic over there before you do the turn. Same thing for the right, a right turn. I want to Look this way, raise the wing, any traffic, all clear, then I can start thinking about my turn after that and do the turn. So as part of as part of your maneuvers, that uh, as a safety precaution, remembering to raise the wing before you do the turn is is good practice so that you are checking to make sure there's no traffic in the direction that you're going to turn into so that's another point i want to make when it comes to turns and doing turns uh the other thing i want you to remember is when you're doing a turn uh, you want to come out of the turn about half of the bank angle. So what I mean by that is if I'm doing a 20, let me zoom in here for a second. I'm facing west, and west is 270 degrees right here. So here's west. Let's say I wanted to turn to the south, and I wanted to do a... 20 degree turn which is the second line right here so you have you have 10 degree turn then you have a 20 degree turn so if I'm doing a 20 degree turn and I want to come out of that turn half of that is 10 degrees so half of 20 degrees is 10 degrees so if I'm starting west which I need to I'm starting here to the west and I want to come out of the turn to the south, I want to start coming out of the turn about 10 degrees since we're doing a 20 degree turn, about 10 degrees before I hit south. So let's try that. Let's just, I'm going to back this off, but hopefully not too far so we can see. So let's say I want to do a 20 degree turn and I'm going to just sort of keep my eye And as I get closer to the south, about 10 degrees before, so right there, we're going to come out of the turn. That ah, came out a little fast. Probably should go a little slower than that. So there I am. But that's the general rule of thumb 
for one to come out of the turn. So if I'm doing a 30 degree turn to the right, and let's say I want to come out of the west, well, half of a 30 degree, 30 degree turn, by the way, is this mark right here on either side. This is 30 degrees left, 30 degrees to the right. So if I want to do a turn 30 degrees to the right, uh, I want to come out about 15 degrees ahead of so if I want to stop on a westerly direction, I want to come out, this is 10 degrees, so 15 degrees would be this small line right here. So let's try that with a 30 degree turn to the right. Uh, so I'm going to try to go 30 degrees, and you notice you're going to turn faster, right? So you want to, sorry, I'm messing with my joystick here. Uh, you want to come out. About 15 degrees, so right about there, slowly, slowly, slowly. I always go too fast. <laughs> I probably should go right about like there, and I'm just going a little too fast, so I passed, I got stopped a little too quickly before I got to the west. Again, I need to practice too because I haven't been practicing my turns. So let me try that one more time. Except I'm not going to go to the south, I'm just going to. Uh, try to stop on the west again. So, 30 degrees. Okay, right about there. That was a little better that time. Right about like that. And that's that puts you right on the W for west. So, so those are some pointers as you are doing the turns. Um, so again, let's try to do, let's just try to do uh, in the turn procedure, a regular turn of say 20 degrees. We're gonna go, we're gonna start westerly direction. And you might even have, there's really no point here, but if you have a, like a building or something, a uh, uh, land feature that you can use to reference your turn, when you're doing a 360 degree turn, um, you can reference that and come out of the turn just looking at the reference, but also keeping your eye on the heading indicator and occasionally glancing at your altimeter and vertical speed indicator. Uh, I'm going to, right now I'm about 3,900 feet here, so I'm going to try to stay at 3,900 because that's where I currently am. And I'm going to do a 20 degree turn to the right. And we will we'll start there. I didn't raise my wig. I know I didn't do that. Sorry. I should have checked for traffic. You check for traffic, then you'll start the turn. So you, well, you want to check a couple things. How is the nose in relation to the horizon? Once you, once you uh, get into the turn, you'll neutralize your controls pretty much. You your rudder and your um, of course you want to make sure you're coordinated the ball is coordinated in the center you want to try to make sure that you're and I'm climbing too much you want to make sure that you are not climbing too much or descending too much I need practice too it takes practice and when you don't do it a lot you know it's easy to get off and part of the challenge too is I'm in a flight simulator and I think, I, I don't know, I could probably ask an actual pilot who's done both the real thing and simulators. I bet it's probably easier in the real thing in a way because the, uh, cause you probably have a feel with uh, forces and all that, but I am using the nose of the airplane. I'm trying to gauge like how my nose is in relation to the horizon. And I just went past West and I'm sitting there talking the whole time and not paying attention to. So I didn't come out to come out to turn fast enough. I'm really doing great tonight, folks. I just gotta say. So we're back to West there. I probably we gotta fail there and do it again, Scott, because that was lousy. 
So now let's try another one. Let's try a 30 degree turn. We're going to try to end up on west, and I will try to focus a little more instead of talk. Uh, try to do a 30 degree uh, turn to the left this time. And get a, uh, you know, picture of the horizon in relation to the nose of the aircraft. And then we'll try to end up, I'm going to go, try to stay coordinated too. I'm doing a little. I'm getting a little shallow here, so I need to add a little more. And that's the other thing is, when you try to get a sight picture, you're also trying to get a sight picture of the angle of bank in relation to the horizon. And you could also look at, of course, the uh, attitude indicator. We're kind of getting to the close to the point where I need to come out of the turn this time. So once again, about 50 degrees before, because it's a 30 degree turn, I'm going to come out and right about there. That was a little better. Uh, not per not tremendous, but not bad. Uh, but you'll you'll see that turns take practice, and I'm not you know I made my mistakes just doing just showing you how to do a turn because it's been a while and I probably should have practiced more before even doing this stream, but it gives you an idea of the fact that it does take practice and you can get rusty in doing t even things like turns uh, and making sure that you're not losing too much altitude, not gaining in too much altitude. I think you try to keep them within 100 feet when you do a 360 degree turn, for example. You want to make sure, again, you're not climbing or descending and try to keep your uh, altitude the same and uh, the one that's really tough if you really want to challenge yourself this one I, I'm sometimes horrible at this and that is steep turns at a 45 degree bank because for one thing the, the one thing I want to tell you about turns too is that the steeper your turn the uh, stall speed will increase so you have to be careful about stalling the aircraft when you're in turns because uh, the stall uh, speed increases as the uh, degree of bank increases and so sometimes people have been uh, have uh, I've heard have gotten into danger when they're coming in for a landing because they stalled the aircraft in a turn and uh, maybe in some cases didn't recover from that so one of the things when you're doing a real steep turn uh, one of the differences when you're doing the turn is you want to add a little power because of the fact that the aircraft can stall in a steep turn. Now, a 45 degree turn is shown by, let me go back to the attitude indicator. So this line right here is a 15 degree turn, this white line in the brown representing the earth. This line right here is the 45 degree line uh, so you're going to have your wings come on that line uh, to indicate a 45 degree uh, turn and so what we're going to do and that's the other thing you try to keep the plane in the center of the attitude indicator we'll talk about that as well so what you have to do is you have to add some power uh, to the aircraft maybe anywhere from 50 to 50 to 150 RPM, uh, especially for steeper turns. And so we're gonna do one, uh, let's try one that's 45 degrees. We'll get back, let me get back west here for just a second. So that means we're gonna wanna come out of the turn at 250 degree, well, depending on which way we're turning, about 20 degrees before we reach west because actually it's a little more than that because half of 45 is 
22 degrees or something like that. But you get the idea. It's it's going to come upon you fast because now the turn is really steep. So we're going to try this 45 degree angle steep turn. Uh, again, shooting for this white line. Let's come in just a bit and let's give it a go. Checking for it. We'll try. We'll go to the right. So I'm going to check for traffic. Are we clear? Yep. Looks good. Come back and let's go for it and see how we do. So there's a 45 degree. Now, what's really easy to do is you see what I'm doing. I'm losing too much altitude. So you got to pull. I got to pull back on the yoke. Remember how to keep that nose up. And you'll really see that when you're trying to do the turn because it's easy to lose altitude. Usually you're not pulling back enough. Now we're about 20 degrees before. So we're gonna come out and it actually wasn't half bad, <laughs> all things considered. Uh, let's try one more. That's one of my better ones because I've had some awful ones where I'm all over the map. I'm gonna try it again. Let me back this off just so I like to see a little more of the horizon. So we're gonna check the traffic all clear of course in reality we know there's not reality we know in our simulator we turned the traffic off so we wouldn't expect to see anything so now we're going to try the 45 degree to the right and right there and again it's easy you have to have that side picture it's easy to turn too shallow but it's or turn too much it, if you turn too much, you might uh, be in a real fix, but you want to try to maintain that 45 degrees. And try not to lose altitude. You really have to kind of hold that yoke back, keep that nose up. And then when you're getting close to the west, you want to come out and Right, I did it a little too fast, but a little bit too fast. That one, so when you try to do a 45 degree, did I add power? <laughs> I don't even know if I added power. So let me do it one more time because I forgot to add power. So again, we'll go to the right, 45 degrees. I was so concentrating on trying to keep the uh, heat from losing out that I'm going to add a little power. Because adding power will help you doing the turn. Oops, not sharp enough. There's 45. So I was, that's a mistake that's common to make. Not flying a little to, you know, not. Uh, not at 45 degrees, you're less than that. Now at about 20 degrees before, I wanna come out. Again, there's standing still. There we go. Right about there. Not too bad, I climbed a bit. But it is a tough, it is tough to do. One more to the left, again, add power. To compensate for the fact that you are doing a steep turn Probably turning a little too shallow, be a little more. And if you can do these, you're really kind of a master of turning the aircraft because these are tougher. These are tougher to do. See, I'm a little too shallow. I keep. But it does show you that it takes a lot of skill and practice to do these. About 20 degrees before west, I'm gonna come out. I did it too fast again. Actually, I went past it, or did I not go past? I didn't go past, I was a little too quick on coming out. So it goes to show that it takes a lot of practice to get it right, but try those now next week 
what we'll do is we're going to talk about other maneuvers. And so one of the things you'll want to do is what's called a clearing turn. And that is also a way to make sure. So if we're going to do like uh, we're going to fly around a point in a circle or we're going to fly what are called S turns over a road or we're going to fly a rectangle um, pattern over a field to give us pattern practice because you fly at an airport, you fly in a pattern when you're, uh, for example, arriving to land uh, at an airport, you'll enter the pattern, for example. So a good way to practice that is get over a farm field that's a rectangle and practice. So we're going to do some of that next time in our next stream. But anytime we do those maneuvers, and I'm going to cover this now, but we won't, we might just mention it in the next stream, and that is you'll want to do clearing turns, which means before you do the maneuver, you want to make sure there's no traffic around. So one of the clearing turns you can do is, let's say I want to do a clearing turn, you just fly 180 degrees to make sure that no traffic is around. You turn 180 degrees. So I would raise, let's say I'm going to turn to the left, I'm going to do a um, clearing turn. So I'm checking for traffic. I'm going to turn to the left. And I started west. So 180 degrees from west is east. And what I want to do is get, as soon as I get east, I'm just basically looking, up, looking around to make sure there's no traffic. And then when I get east, I'm good to come out of there. And then I'm pretty sure that there's no traffic around. So look around and I can then start my maneuver. And that's one way you could do a clearing turn. The other way to do a clearing turn is uh, you turn 90 degrees. Uh, let's say I turn 90 degrees to the left, then I'll turn 90 degrees to the right. That's the other way to do a clearing turn. Or I turn 90 degrees to the right, and then 90 degrees to the left. So let's do that kind of a clearing turn. Let's do it to the left. I'll show you that way. So check it for traffic. Flying east, uh, we're going to do a clearing turn first, 90 degrees to the left, which will be north. So we're looking for the N in this case, which will be 360 degrees. We'll come out of that turn. And that is a clear. And then we'd want to do another one. So we did one to the left. We want to do a 90 degrees to the right. Checking for traffic. Make sure there's no traffic around. And then come out. So these clearing turns are a way to make sure there's no traffic around before you do uh, a particular maneuver. So we're going to talk about maneuvers uh, next week so stay tuned for that and we'll do some of those so practice your turns practice uh, some turns at 20 degrees a few turns at 30 degrees do them both right and left try to practice coming out at a certain uh, direction from your turn whether it's 360 degrees full circle whether it's 180 degrees whether it's 90 degrees or or if you're just going say east and you want to stop at 200 and say you're facing east right now and you just want to stop at 210 degrees or whatever you decide you just practice and uh, and again keep those points in mind that I discussed in terms of starting your turn by making sure it looks like the earth is spinning around a certain point talked about that uh, the nose in reference to the horizon and the other points that were discussed in relation to turns 
uh, for example, making sure that you're not uh, climbing and descending, uh, and just uh, coming out about. Uh, so if you're flying, if you're turning uh, 30 degrees, coming out 15 degrees, half of that ahead of the point where you want to stop the turn, and just some of those points we talked about today that you could apply and practice with to help you when doing turns and oh coordinated turns as well keeping your turns coordinated with the ball by keeping the ball in the center so that's another thing that's the one the other thing i was trying to think of so so keep those things in mind try them practice and uh hopefully it's something that you master better than i did tonight <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it does show that you do get rusty and it takes a lot of practice uh, and also um, simulators depending on the sensitivity of your control your controls can uh, provide a challenge as well so anyway hope this helped and I look forward to talking to you talking to you all some more next time around take care Thank you.